Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. And pack one, pick one. Well, our rare is pretty decent. Jace Wheeler of Mysteries can definitely win some games. Can both mill the opponent out, we can win with the alternate win condition and mill ourselves out. There's a lot of fun things you can do. The mana cost triple blue is pretty strict, so it's not going to be easy to play many colors in this deck. Then next up, we've got the Taskmaster, Triumph and Celebrant, all pretty good on commons. I wouldn't take the Celebrant too highly since you don't necessarily want to be black-white from the get-go, but both the Triumph and the Taskmaster are perfectly fine first picks. And then looking at the commons, the Pegasus is great for a white aggressive deck. We'll take the Jace, just have some fun with it, but you could make a good case for taking Triumph or Taskmaster over Jace. Alright, so had we taken Pegasus or Chandra's Triumph, we would probably be looking at Feather here as a powerful flyer. Lots of synergies in the sets with uh, pump spells that can target it. Maybe draw some cards. Um, some Blade Angels, pretty good uh, six drop as well, especially if you can enhance it even further. Some pretty decent cards like Lazata Plating is definitely playable, uh, although you would prefer to have a couple more creatures to protect. Lazata Reaver, pretty good. Multiple synergies with uh, requiring you to have Sacrifice fodder. Uh, Erratic Visionary, also reasonable to drop. Gives you a bit of action in the late game, discarding lands, finding more action. So there are a lot of different directions we could go here. So ideally, what's the best Jace deck? It's gonna be primarily blue, but the secondary color is pretty much up for grabs. Could be black for some removal, could be white for some flyers, could be red for some red removal too, green for maybe proliferate. We are not necessarily married to a second color yet with the Jace. The most individually powerful card in the pack is probably Feather, but of course Feather and Jace don't go anywhere in the same deck. Sunblade Angel on the other hand I could still play alongside Jace pretty easily. Lazatap Reaver would be fine if we want to end up in blue-black as an early play that we can sacrifice to various effects. Could stick to blue and take a Visionary or a Plating, although I think those cards are worse than just taking Angel at the start of the draft. Alright, looks like we're gonna take the Feather against maybe better judgment. Alright, so we've got out to be a mill deck with Jace or a self mill deck. We've got outs to be an aggressive red-white tech featuring Feather. So we've got two options in this pack basically. I guess three options, but the Defiant Strike we're hoping to wheel and we would just take the Pride Mate. Or we could take the Avon Eternal, which would be nice alongside Jace. So those are the two main considerations in this pack. There's not a ton of life gain synergies to go with the Pride Mate necessarily, but it doesn't take much for the Pride Mate to be good, like even gaining life once and making it a 3-3 would be quite good for two mana and otherwise 2 mana 2-2 two, two is not the worst. Even Eternal might be the best card in the pack. Don't think a Jace deck necessarily wants to beat down with a 2-2 two, two flyer, but it can also block opposing flyers. The 1-1 one, one mass token we can easily sacrifice, and of course not every game with a Jace deck. We're gonna win with Jace, sometimes you're gonna win with creatures too, and then Even Eternal is totally fine. Yeah, I think if I'm taking a Feather card here, I'm taking the Pride Mate, hoping to wield Defiant Strike. I think I remember seeing Defiant Strikes go pretty late, so we shouldn't prioritize those, even though it does play well with Feather, of course. So it's pretty much Eternal versus Pride Mates, Jace versus Feather. Which one do we want to keep alive here? And that's kind of the problem with taking Feather, is that we're never going to play it both in the same deck. Whereas if I had taken the Angel in a previous pack, then I could have easily ended up blue-white and played both. And then I would probably take the Avon Eternal here. Alright, we'll take the Avon and stick to the Jace plan for now. And we see another Defiant Strike if we wanted to go down the Feather path, but uh, Cal's Dismissal is pretty good for blue interaction. The 1-1 one, one token comes in handy very often. I think uh, after taking Avon Eternal it makes sense to take Cal's Dismissal here. Narset is not like a slam dunk pick here. It's great and constructed and limited. It's a bit more difficult to make Narset really worth two cards but it is still potentially quite powerful if our deck has enough uh, non-creature spells. Uh, Firemind Vessel could allow for some crazy ramp and mana fixing, although again we're not going to try and play Feather and Jace in the same deck, so we would want this in case we like open a Nicol Bolas in our Jace deck for example. 
Skulker is reasonable. Pegasus would be okay if we want to be a bit more aggressive. So there's a lot of options once again. Yeah, band together is fine in case we want to pivot into blue and green, although we don't have a ton of creatures at the moment for the band. If I take the Narset, then it's clear the direction we're headed. It's kind of a more controlling blue base deck, trying to pick up some removal spells that we can find with Narset. With two powerful planeswalkers, we can try and leverage those to win the game. I think I like the idea of Jason Narset in the same deck, and then just pick up a lot of uh, removal spells basically. Non creature spells we can find. And how about a Jace's Triumph? This card would be great without Jace in our deck, but it's pretty funny that we do have a Jace in our deck. So, seems like a perfect fit. Uh, Transmutation I might even consider playing, even though I don't love the card in the set since there's so much plus one plus one counters and proliferate going on. That um, Transmutation is not always great, but when we have Jace and Narset, we just want all the removal we can find, basically. And alright, this is definitely a signal. Spark Harvest, 7th pick. Sign that maybe black is open. I do remember Spark Harvest going way later than they're supposed to, so we shouldn't take this as too much of a sign, but I'm still gonna take the Spark Harvest here. Contentious Plan would also be great in our deck, with two Planeswalkers we can proliferate on. An extra counter on our set means an extra minus 2 activation, but uh, Spark Harvest is just too good to pass up on. Great with my Even Eternal and the Calisus Missile as 1-1 one, one tokens I can sacrifice. And we're looking at maybe blue-black at the moment. Here No Escape is reasonable. There's lots of bombs in the set that you want to counter with No Escape. Most of them like the, the gods that are creatures, some powerful planeswalkers like Sarkon, Nicol Bolas. So No Escape covers kind of the more broken cards that the opponent could play. And this could be a pretty good Aid the Fallen deck, with two Planeswalkers in the deck already. Uh, with Aid the Fallen you always want to have a healthy mix of creatures and Planeswalkers to get back. Usually aim for like 3 plus Planeswalkers, and you usually have enough creatures for this to be good. Uh, totally Lost would also be reasonable as a bit of interaction. Guild Globe as a cantrip that uh, maybe fixes our mana would be fine too. But I kind of like Aid the Fallen in case we don't get another one. I've got a bunch of different options. Skulker, a reasonable defensive creature that can also threaten opposing planeswalkers or close out the game. Plating as a way to protect our creatures, or maybe against discard. If the opponent tries to make us discard a card, we can plating instead. Uh, Silverwing, not exciting, but sometimes you'll play it. I think I like the Skulker here. And you're pretty sad if you have to play a Naga Eternal. We did indeed wield a Defiant Strike, so if we did go down the Feather Path, then... Uh, the fine strike would have been quite good. Not too excited about a charity extractor or a statue necessarily, but I guess extractors more likely to make the cut at this point since we don't have many good defensive creatures. And I'm probably never playing two of them. Sometimes you do get the combo with extractor and uh, Huatli, which can make the extractor deal 5 damage with life link, which is pretty good, but we're not going to be in that color combination. I guess Statue is a non-creature I can find with Narset, and it can be okay sometimes. But it's of course better if you can ramp it out in a green deck. And not a fan of Ghost Form, maybe we'll play the wall if we need an extra blocker. Alright, so we're pretty solidly in blue, and probably black as our second color, but we could still switch if we open a great green, white or red card, for example. I guess I'll uh, stick to black here, Massacre Girl is great can potentially be a one-sided sweeper and a 4-4 menace all at once. So that's a pretty good deal. Uh, Soren's Thirst could maybe make the cut, not super exciting. Uh, weird, I would definitely play, but that's an easy Massacre Girl. Oh wow, this pack is something else. Now, we're not a great Bolas Citadel deck, in the sense that we don't have much life gain and we have some pretty pricey cards that we don't necessarily want to play off the Citadel. It is still a powerful card draw engine, of course. can still play a lance for free, and then if I end up drawing my entire deck, I can win with Jace. So we have a bit of insurance in case I draw my entire library. Epiphany would also be quite good. Spark Harvest would be very good too. I don't think this is a great Obnixilus deck. This is much better in more aggressive decks. I think I would take Spark Harvest over Epiphany at this point, since we already have quite a bit of card draw between Triumph, Narset and Jace, that I don't need to prioritize another Epiphany, even though there are times where you would prefer the Epiphany. 
Yeah, I guess we'll take the Citadel. It's just a fun card to play with, too. That has to count for something. Uh, Deliver unto Evil, not amazing. I don't even know if you would play this if you have Bolas in your deck. This is also not really looking like a Dreadmalkin deck, as we don't have a ton of Sacrifice fodder. So this is between a random Herald of the Dreadhorde as a roadblock for the opponents, or a Guild Globe as just kind of a cheap cantrip. That can also fix for mana, since we do have like triple blue for Jace, triple black for Citadel, so a bit of mana fixing could be fine. Um, Herald could be good too, we don't have many 4-drops yet, and I would prefer it over Charity Extractor. So, we'll take a Herald. And here I'm pretty happy with Erratic Visionary, as just a cheap blocker with a relevant ability. Not a fan of Crush Descent, this card just ends up being dead too often for mana for a 2-2 at instant speed is not what you want. I think I prefer the cheaper Visionary over Totally Lost, even though I might play Totally Lost if I get it later. Alright, um, usually not a fan of Augur Bolas, even though we might have enough non-creature spells for Narsets. That doesn't mean we have enough instants and sorceries for Augur Bolas, since the Planeswalkers, for example, don't count, artifacts don't count. So yeah, I don't think Augur would be amazing in this deck, but uh, Toll of the Invasion, on the other hand, is great. Bit of hand disruption, take away those powerful bombs from the opponent. This is very much a set determined by bombs in uh, either deck, and Toll of the Invasion can take them away preemptively. So I'm a pretty big fan of the cards, great synergy with cards like Spark Harvest as well, being able to sack the 1-1 one -one token. And alright, this is a pretty close pick. Not a huge fan of Price of Betrayal. It's usually going to trade down for the opponent's cards, because if we try and kill a Planeswalker with this, they already got an activation out of it. If we try and kill some creature with plus one counters, they usually already got some value out of it. So it's never an amazing card, but it can be serviceable sometimes. I view it more as a, a reasonable sideboard card, as opposed to a card I'm happy to main deck. Uh, but another Callous Dismissal would be excellent, a bit of interaction. We've got plenty of card draw to make up for the fact that we're wasting a card to bounce an opposing creature. The 1-1 one -one token comes in handy with our Spark Harvest. Another Contentious Plan would be good, I guess this is the first one, since it can proliferate onto all those 1-1 one -one zombie tokens. We've got a few Planeswalkers to put extra loyalty onto, so plan would be very good too. And then Transmutation as kind of a weak removal spell if we need it. But I think it's between Plan and Dismissal here, and it's pretty close. We already have one Dismissal, I have a Spark Harvest as more removal, and then of course Massacre Girl. But I could use a few more interactive spells potentially. But I do have a lot of synergy with a Contentious Plan as well. I think I'm leaning Contentious Plan here, just to kind of decrease the deck size by letting a Scantrip and find our action cards like Jace and Bolas the Citadel more often. Uh, still not really interested in Augur Bolas, but I am interested in Toll of the Invasion. Also gets better the more proliferate cards we have. And yeah, I mean, I guess I'll take another one. There are, of course, a few diminishing returns with too many discard spells, since at some point you're gonna top deck this when you put in empty handed. But even then, it still makes a 1 1. Alright, so pretty happy with our deck so far. In the last pack, I'm gonna be looking for maybe an extra Spark Harvest or another removal spell like Obnixil's Cruelty. And then maybe some way of gaining a life to go with the Bolas Citadel would be nice. I could maybe splash like a Bulwark Giant if I get a Guild Globe for fixing. Alright, last pack. Well, there's the Spark Harvest, which might be my pick. Uh, Lassa Tap Reaver, Even Eternal, both quite good as well. Ogin's Conjurant can also be fine if we have enough Proliferate. I don't think this is necessarily the best deck for it, but it's never a terrible card. Karn's Bastion also proliferates, but given that I have a Jace that I'm trying to cast and a Bolas of Citadel, I don't think I want too many Corlos lands like a Karn's Bastion. And we did need more removal, so I don't think I can pass up on the Harvest. If this pack had nothing, then I might take the Bastion and try to make it work, but I don't see a reason to pass up on what our deck needs. 
Now I'm pretty interested in this Aven Eternal. I don't think I'm realistically going to splash the Death Sprout, even though it's a very powerful card. Uh, Guild Globe could also be fine, again, for a bit of extra mana fixing. Aven Eternal is very good. The fact that this makes a 1 1 and a 2 2 is great alongside Massacre Girl, since it can set up for a nice board wipe. But uh, yeah, Guild Globe maybe fits in the curve a little bit better, since I don't have a ton of action on turn 2. So if I take the Eternal, there's a chance I need to cut a Toll of the Invasion, which is a totally fine card. Whereas Guild Globe would fit in the curve quite well. I think I'm taking the Aven still, and then hopefully we can get another Guild Globe later in this pack. Alright, nothing really here that I want. Don't need a fourth Toll of the Invasion, so yeah, I don't think this pick really matters. Not much synergy with the Teferi's Time Twist. I guess it can reset like a Planeswalker that's about to die, but it's not amazing. Don't think I'm playing it. Nah, I'll speculate on it. Alright, Thunder Drake could be pretty good. Another Aid of Fallen would be reasonable, but I don't think I want to play two with just two Planeswalkers and not even that many creatures. Just take the Drake for now. And Spark Reaper looks quite good. I have a bunch of those 1-1s one from Toll of the Invasion and from uh, Aven Eternal I can sacrifice. I can sacrifice one of my Planeswalkers that's about to die to an opposing attack. And it's also a bit of a life gain to offset the Bolas Citadel. Otherwise, Sorn's Thirst could also be reasonable, but it is double black on turn 2, which I'm not going to have very often. Yeah, the only concern here is that the, the curve is a bit heavy on 3s. JSS Triumph I don't need to cast on turn 3 very often. No Escape I'm probably not playing on turn 3. So that leaves me with like 6 cards that I can realistically play on turn 3. This would be a 7th, which is a bit much still. I could shave a Toll pretty easily too. So if we look at it this way, I guess another 3-drop is not the end of the world. Thirst is just pretty low impact most of the time. Like the advance can be okay if we go turn 3 Aven Eternal or Toll of the Invasion, because then we basically get to make a 4-4 four four with haste that gets to attack right away. So it's not the worst, but I only have the one proliferate card in Contentious Plan. Again, don't think I'm playing 2 Aid of Fallen with only 2 Planeswalkers. Probably take the advance. It is nice that it's a non-creature that I can find with Narsets. So it has a bit going for it. Am I playing Behemoth? Hmm, maybe. I might need an extra Closer. Or I could play Transmutation. So now the question is, do I need an extra beefy creature to hold the ground or pressure opposing Planeswalkers with? Or do I need an extra interactive spell? to shrink down opposing creatures. How do I deal with large creatures from my opponents? I have two copies of Spark Harvest, I can bounce them with Dismissal to buy some time, can maybe counter one with the No Escape, and if they don't have Trample I can chum block them with my 1-1 amass tokens and then maybe sacrifice to the Reaper for value. So we do have ways to handle larger creatures. I think I'm leaning Behemoth. Just have an extra high impact creature to return with the Aid the Fallen as well. Didn't think I'm playing the Silver Wing, but closest to making the deck. Not gonna play unlikely aid with like five creatures. Alright, so last pack could have gone a little bit better. But still picked up some useful cards. The second Spark Harvest, the uh, Thunder Drake. Second Aven Eternal, Spark Reaper. What is this deck missing? Maybe like an Obnixil's Cruelty, maybe a third Planeswalker would have been nice. Kazmina, for example, would have been quite good in this deck. An extra contentious plan could have rounded out the deck nicely. But overall, still pretty happy with uh, our deck here. We've got the Citadel, we've got the Jace as powerful card draw engines, and uh, hopefully we can win a game with uh, Jace in play. I'm gonna make one cut if I want to play 17 lands. I think I'm okay with 17 lands. Could be the Advance, could be the Behemoth, could be the Statue, could be the Wall of Runes. Those are the more questionable cards. Alright, Wall is gone. Who needs early game plays anyway? And then the mana distribution, probably favoring blue slightly for the Narset and Jace. So 9-8 seems fine. We've got the Citadel, so we got to play the land with the Citadel art. 
All right, Massacre Mystery it is. All right, so we're on the draw. Only two lands, which is not great, but I do have a Spark Harvest I can cast by sacrificing the token from Dismissal. So for up against the creature deck, I can make that play or the token from Toll of the Invasion. So we do have a lot of early interaction to stay afloat. So I think we'll keep Statue not looking great here, but... Uh, All right, land three is good. Gives me the toll of the invasion on curve. Huh, Avon Eternal is good too. If I play Avon Eternal, I'm not blocking the weird, and I'm not really interested in racing my opponent necessarily. I think I told first still. Ooh, Bolt Band. That's a potentially scary card. Um, bunch of random creatures. Crawl Stinger we don't care about. Can trade off for the Avon Eternal. This is potentially the scariest card if they can keep it up. So I think I'm taking the Bolt Band. It's just the most awkward card to play around. Yeah, it is true that Bolt Band goes down in value when we know about it, but it's still kind of difficult to play around sometimes. Well, now I can just make a 4-4 and hold off my opponent's offense. So that seems good. The awkward thing about Advance is that I kind of want to sacrifice a 1-1 for Spark Harvest, but I'm close to 5 mana anyway where I can just cast this for the full price. And we know they don't have an answer for the 4-4 in hand. I could Spark Harvest now and then play Avon, but I don't necessarily need to Spark Harvest these. Maybe Grizzly is a long-term problem and I need to kill it now. I think I'm just advancing. And I'm just gonna hang back. Close decision there. I think the, the second best option was probably Spark Harvest, Grizzly, play Avon Eternal. Well, this Massacre Girl could be pretty effective too. Although missing the 1-1 to really go off. Probably just play Avon Eternal, say go. Avon can trade for Stinger. And I've got a 5-5 to hold the fort, and otherwise it, the Avon can start attacking. Sure. The Mulligan Monkey. I guess it does block my Avon Eternal here. Probably just Triumph. Well, this statue could be good if we can hit our land drop. Another harvest. So it doesn't look like I'm gonna need to massacre girl defensively anytime soon. So I'm probably okay playing more creatures. Alright, and now the statue is gonna be pretty backbreaking with my opponent missing land drops. can also use my Dismissal to bounce a Stinger and my opponent won't be able to replay it for some time. Maybe that's the play. Just Dismissal the Stinger. And then I can either play Heralds or maybe attack with Skulker. Suppose a Skulker can just attack by itself without making a blockable. Since my opponent can't really kill it unless they have a trick. And then we can play Herald afterwards. But yeah, my... Opponent can't really recover from uh, three lands versus statue. On the draw, double Toll of the Invasion Triumph into eventual statue. So this hand is pretty weak against opposing aggro decks, but those aren't super popular. It's pretty good in kind of the more mid rangey bomb heavy matchups which you encounter more often than not so I'll, I'll try it and uh, advance could also be a good follow-up to a toll of the invasion 
Alright, blue reds. That's definitely one of the more popular archetypes. Alright, never mind. Teamer. Another turn three weird. Opponent's got a stealth mission combo deck here with double weird, rioters, ambush. Probably want to take the ambush. My advance can hold the fort reasonably well. And if they go all in with the stealth mission, I can maybe punish them if I draw a removal spell. I guess I should have been uh, focusing on playing islands because I have Jace in my deck. Could have also been reasonable to just toll again, taking away stealth mission. Alright. Opponent does kind of get to go off here. Geode into stealth mission. I guess this is going to hit pretty hard, so we got a toll of the invasion. So, hopefully we can top deck a removal spell here. Probably got a Jace's Triumph and hope to find something. If I play Jace, then the weird probably still goes face and then I only get to see one card. I would have to chum block and I would be facing a 6-6 six, six and a 4-4 four, four at the very least. Of course, I would have a Jace in play, so then I could cast Triumph with Jace in play and draw a lot of cards, but I'm probably going to be too far behind to be able to recover. Alright, Spark Harvest and Avon, those are two great draws. So if I played Avon, this is a 6-6. Six, six. It's probably the play, and then I could Spark Harvest for 5 mana next turn. Hope they didn't pick up any additional non-creature spells. Otherwise, I guess I can chump the 6-6 six, six with Avon and block the 4-4 four, four weird. Dismissal is also very good. So now I don't have to Spark Harvest to Weird, I can just Dismissal it instead. Yeah, it's probably the play. Yeah, I can tap two islands and then still have access to Spark Harvest in case something goes wrong. Alright, that works out. Play Jace. Think I'm milling my opponent here. And then I think I should attack. Now we're drawing two cards per turn. I've got a removal spell in hand, a statue. And my opponent packs it in. So yeah, pretty key draws from that Jace's Triumph, finding the Avon and the Spark Harvest. And what do we have here? Another pretty solid hands. Another blue red deck. Turn to Strix. Statue and joining us once again. Ooh, Tybalt, that's a good one. I think I'm in favor of uh, playing Toll first still. Alright, Turret's Ogre, Burning Prophet, Jaya's Greeting. I can block the Ogre quite well with my Heralds, so I'm probably taking the Greeting, that way they can't kill my Avon and I can keep the Strix in check. And by taking away the Greeting, of course, we take away one non-creature spell as well. Totally fine trading my token for a devil. My friend is here to help your pain. Let's 
So I'm probably... ooh, Massacre Girl. That's a pretty insane top deck. So I kind of want to do nothing here. And then next turn just Massacre Girl to wipe the entire board. And hope they commit the Burning Prophet to the board as well. Alright, let's hope that last card is not a no escape. If they have a removal spell, they could kill their own devil in response, and then the Massacre Girl wouldn't kill the rest of the board. It's potentially greedy for me not to play something last turn, in case they did have removal for their own devil, but uh, I guess it worked out. Yeah, if they kill their own Strix, I'm pretty sure the Massacre Girl still wipes the rest of the board. It's gonna be hard fire on the Massacre Girl. That's fine. Can go Visionary or Skulker plus Avon. I guess I'll Skulker. Yeah, if my opponent had a Heartfire, what they should have done is just Heartfire sacrificing the 1-1 one -one in response to the Massacre Girl, and then the 1-1 one -one wouldn't have died and the chain wouldn't have gone off. So potentially a misstep there for my opponent. I could Statue which is kind of appealing too. Prevents my opponent from casting anything too expensive. Yeah, I guess that's fine. And the blue-red deck does play a lot of cantripping effects, like Guild Globe and other cheap uh, cantrips, and those all get a lot worse with a statue in play. Alright, there's some uh, green in there too. Electromancer with two spells in the graveyard kills my Avon. No escape is great insurance to have as well. But I can double spell here to grow the Drake, which seems worth it. All right, we got there, so Massacre Girl steals the show. But uh, yeah, Massacre Girl is not a very straightforward card to kind of parse and know exactly what happens. So 3-0 so far, let's keep it up. This hand is missing blue, we need double blue for Narset, so I think we can ship this one back. All right, that didn't really improve too much. Although I can put Narset on the bottom, and then I only need a single island for Avon Eternal. We're on the place issue, so I only have really two draw steps to find an island, as opposed to three on the draw. And if I don't draw specifically island, the sand doesn't do anything. So as much as it pains me, I think we gotta go to five. Alright, this is more keepable. So I'm probably gonna keep three lands and bottom the behemoth. And then I gotta hope to draw one land in... A bunch of draws, three draws. I could keep four lands, but then if I draw fifth, I'm kind of flooding out without much action. All right, well. Might regret spotting the land now, but at least we've got some action in hand. Massacre Girl can catch me back up if I'm behind. And Toll of the Invasion, we've got a bit of redundancy thanks to Aid of Fallen. But now, of course, Massacre Girl gets worse knowing about it. Takes a Drake. Alright, that's a pretty stacked hand. They've got a pretty similar looking deck. I can take the Davriel, they can aid the Fallen it back, which is gonna cost some time to set up. 
Cruelty is very good against my Herald as well. So yeah, we're probably losing this game, if I had to guess, but... I think taking Davriel gives me the best chance. Alright, I'm just gonna say go. So now they can aid back Davriel and play it. But they're probably gonna wait until they have an extra creature in the graveyard. And yeah, still no land. Can Spark Harvest sacking the 1-1. One -one. Do I really want to kill Strix though? I think I'll pass. Uh, I could Contentious Plan first, see what I draw. I guess that's probably better since it doesn't matter if I proliferate or not before or after the Spark Harvest. But maybe that changes my mind on what I should do. The draw lands. Maybe I should have actually not proliferated just to set up this Massacre Girl. I needed to draw two lands to make that happen, basically. I think I gotta kill the Drake here just so I don't take a million damage. But knowing about the Aid of Fallen, of course, it's not great. Well, that's kind of a questionable decision for my opponent, knowing about the Massacre Girl. Making a 1-1 one -one for us. Sadly, didn't uh, find a land here. So I'm probably gonna have to play Heralds. Wow, Planeswalker after Planeswalker here. Alright, now my opponent is wisely gonna decline to make a 1-1. One -one. Now we draw the land, but it's too late and the Massacre Girl doesn't kill anything. So we're pretty dead. Can make a 4-4, four -four, I still take a lethal. Aid the Fallen doesn't do anything. Ah, jeez. So we almost had a had the hope of getting back into that game, but yeah, with Kaya and then still the Aid of Fallen in hand, my opponent can easily win that game despite losing their entire board. This hand is pretty rough. Three swamps and a Jace Wielder of Mysteries. Uh, so this is like a turn seven or eight Jace at the earliest. So if this were six card hands without Jace, it would be keepable. We just get a bonus Jace on a multi-six, basically. Uh, I guess I'll keep. And well, we kept a hand with one island, drew two islands to cast Jason Curve, so that feels pretty nice. Against black green, milling them can be a downside since they have eight defaults and stuff. But I think in general, probably still want to mill them, and we'll just protect Jace here. Alright, that's proud on my Aven, that's acceptable. Jace survives, and now I can play maybe a Skulker to protect it. I think I prefer Skulker over Advance, because that way if they do kill my Skulker, I still have the 1-1 one -one to chum block with if I want to. Although I could just let Jace take a hit. 
They could just have a spark harvest to kill him. Well, we did get quite a bit of value from him, so can't complain. No escape, I probably want to keep up. And then next turn I can advance plus no escape. So we'll hit for three. Yeah, I think that's worth countering. It represents extra cards with Spark Reaper at the very least, and it's kind of annoying to get past. Especially if my plan is to make a 4 4 a mass. They could definitely have scarier threats here, and I might regret it. Ooh. Don't mind if I do. Now, my opponent already has a million lands in play, but it's still pretty decent here, I think. Makes it a lot more difficult for my opponent to double spell, and we're winning the race at the moment. Up Nixilis. Alright, kill Skulker, I get to draw some cards. Probably worth it to kill Obnixilus here. And then we'll contentious plan once Obnixilus is dead so we don't take one damage. Narsets, alright. So next turn we can go digging. Can we find a Bolas of Citadel with Narset? We could play it next turn too. Alright, Stinger is a good answer for my 5-5, five five, but maybe Narset can find a removal spell. A, the Fallen can get back Jace, and I can play Jace to have a creature to get back. I've got the Avon or the Skulker, yeah, that seems good. I think I'm leaning Skulker. I'm always stepping. Let's try this. Ooh, are we gonna get to Jace's triumph with Jason play? Live the dream. Could have been reasonable to Maybe take the Avon, play Avon this turn, and then play Jace, just to have kind of more insurance to protect our Planeswalkers. But even if they kill my 5-5, they only get to kill Jace, and then I still have a pretty full grip. So we should be okay. And the statue really limits what my opponent can do in one turn. They currently have 17 cards remaining versus my 18. Stinger's going face. I don't hate trading. I've got so much going for me that I don't need to randomly die to some burn spell, although I don't know what that would be. If my opponent had an aid to fall, they could already get back like a giant, which they can cast through the statue. I don't know, I think this is fine. Ooh, plain white celebration. That's pretty strong. Makes three two twos, gets back up Nixilus, which, you know, is pretty good against us here. Uh, 17 cards left, I guess we Narset first. Ooh, I want to take the Citadel, but I probably got to take the Toll. Alright, so we can Toll take a look. And then just kind of build some defenses. I 
Do I need to bounce the token? I guess that's okay. Bit of insurance in case I kill the Skulker. I could potentially win with the alternate win condition from Jace by milling myself. As we're gonna get to draw a few cards, but it's pretty risky in case my opponent top decks another removal spell for my Planeswalker. So for now I'm gonna keep milling my opponent. All going face. I think I wanna just minimize the damage I take at this point. Could also double block Reaper, take four, but that means taking more damage. Alright, I guess we have a Narset in place so they couldn't even draw from the Reaper. So yeah, maybe it was worth it to just take one more damage and kill the 2-2 then. Alright, so let's keep activating Jace. And I think we want to just empty our hands and fill the board with creatures, so... Drake into Herald. Into Visionary. They're slowly dying to the statue. I guess I can potentially kill them next turn by activating Skulker and attacking with Drake. I guess they have a spinner that can block Drake. So yeah, we're, we're not really in a hurry. We can uh, easily win with our Jace here. 11 cards remaining for the opponents. Spark Harvests is good insurance. my own Reaper to maybe gain a bit of life. I gotta cast a Triumph with Jace in play. Let's think this That's an interesting draw. But it's got nine cards left. I've got eight. So yeah, next turn I can ultimate and win. So yeah, I guess we'll wipe the board here, sure. So I just gotta... Sacrifice one of my creatures. And then this will die and set off the chain. So I guess I can target the Reaper itself. Sure. Basically everything dies. So at the end of the day, I've got 8 cards in library, my opponent 7. I can ultimate Jace and win the game. So let's just double check, draw 7, 7. Bam! Alright, that was fun. One island away from Jace. I can cycle the contentious plan. Turn three Reaper to protect Jace, so looks good. Aid the Fallen to get back Jace. Turn two Visionary, not bad. So I could Contentious Plan to make it more likely that I can play Jason 4. Probably still leaning Spark Reaper. Alright, so Toll takes Jace. And then Aids can get back Visionary plus Jace. Or they can take Aids, which is fine by me. Alright, let's see if they have another Toll of the Invasion. Heralds, sure. 
probably just cycling the contentious plan now. And then if I draw land, I can play Visionary. So still no triple blue for Jace. If the Herald attacks, am I okay trading the Spark Reaper for it? Opponent's not gonna offer. Maybe keeping up a no escape. Um, I could also just pass a turn and keep up Reaper in case I try and kill one of my creatures. And then I can still end of turn activate Visionary. Because if I were to draw a land here with Visionary, it's not like I get to play anything this turn. Unless I wanted to hit two land drops to play statue. I think I'm just gonna pass. I think I'll just take three. And then I could sacrifice, like, if I'm all in on this Massacre Girl play, I could, like, sacrifice my own Reaper first, but then if they have a counterspell, that's pretty bad. I think we just loot with Visionary. And we can be pretty patient. Narset ain't bad. My hand's pretty stacked, but I don't have the lands to cast these sweet spells. I think Statue's gonna be good this game. Might just be Skulker. And they might counter this. Narset was the bait. No need to panic. Good help is easy to find in war. Now if they have an aid the fallen, things get pretty messy. Alright, so we do have a massacre girl in hand. I could block with Visionary instead, but if they have a trick, I'm pretty happy that they play it. We'll try this. Nothing. Still no triple blue for Jace. So they definitely have something. I'll pass. And then... Ideally, my opponent just plays a creature that dies to the Massacre Girl, that one. So I guess that was their trick. They were gonna pump the zombie army to be enormous. So yeah, now the Massacre Girl doesn't quite work out the way I want it to. So I guess I can play my own Avon Eternal to set that up. Alright, so now that's a 6-6. Six, six. Or I guess I can jump with a Visionary and sack Visionary. Just need to buy some time to set up this Massacre Girl. Hmm, alright, so... That makes things maybe a little bit more difficult now. But still probably feasible. Play Thunder Drake, play Avon. And then just have some blockers, and then I can probably win the game with these leftovers. And if they have a counter spell, they might counter this, and then I'm in the clear. Alright, they had another no escape, so. What happens now if I play girl with just the board the way it is? Because we got to remember the Herald of the Dreadhordes, if it dies, also makes this bigger. But now that they played a bunch of extra stuff, we might be okay. Alright, so let's see. So I can't take the damage because that's exactly 10 damage, so I got to block at least one creature. So if I were to jump here, what happens? Massacre Girl comes into play, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5. But then this is going to grow because of the heralds, so it doesn't quite work out. Well, does that do it? 
minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5, minus 6. That trigger goes on the stack. Does it resolve before all the Massacre Girl triggers resolve? I think it gets to resolve. In which case I want to just Massacre Girl and then play Invasion. That way I can chump block with my 1-1. One, one. Yeah, so this resolves first and then it wouldn't have died. So yeah, this is fine. So now I can chump block this and then hope to draw some answers with Jace. That's a lot of no escapes in their deck. Alright, well we've got another Spark Harvest we're drawing towards. Uh, Callous Dismissal would be great. There we go, so we'll play this first. Alright, so we might have uh, turned the corner here. Gonna keep Massacre Girl on defense. And then Jace can hopefully uh, ride us to victory. Opponent's got 12 cards remaining. Definitely not gonna kill them with damage before the game ends some other way. They can attack our face. That's a three turn clock. Although I could also just win with uh, Jace by milling myself. So yeah, now I might wanna mill myself. That way I'll have nine cards and next turn eight and this could ultimate so they are forced to attack my Jace. Yeah, two lands milds, heralds. I guess now Massacre Girl gets to attack. Guild Globe. That's okay. So yeah, they have to attack my Jace, otherwise Jace wins the game. Unless they can find another 2 damage somewhere to kill me, which is definitely possible. They had the haste Shriek Diver, which could have won them the game. Alright, no escape. Ultimates. Bam. Well, that's uh, 2 wins with Jace Ultimate, even with a Citadel on the bottom both games. That was a close one. Sweet, so we're 5 and 1. Let's keep it up. Alright. Statue chilling in our opening hand once again. This hand's okay. Aven Eternal, great synergy with uh, Spark Harvest. I'll remember to play out my islands in case we draw Jace at some points. Probably still worth it to play Aven over keeping up uh, no escape since I guess this costs 4 mana because of Dovin. Alright, Guard Mage is very good. Opponent does not activate Dovin. I think I'm okay just playing out my Thunder Drake. Can of course just uh, kill Dovin itself. But, yeah, Dovin just makes my statue a bit more expensive, which is kind of annoying. Okay, 
Citadel also a bit more expensive. So I have to sacrifice a creature here. Because of Dovin. Don't have no escape up, sadly. Another one, alright. So I can either play Behemoth or keep up no escape. So I think I'm okay tapping out for Behemoth to start pressuring Dovin. And then if I draw lands, I can slam one of these powerful artifacts. Kasmina's okay, but not bank-breaking. And an auger. And they found a no-escape. Well, they didn't seem like a deck with a lot of instants and sorceries, so they probably got pretty lucky to hit there. I'm excellent in your... well, not. So hopefully we draw land. I think I'm okay with the double block, or am I? So with Citadel, the Thunder Drake could pretty easily become quite large. Right now, I wouldn't mind trading for Griffin, because I can eventually just outgrind my opponent with the Citadel. I think I'm okay with the double block. So, play Visionary, keep up no escape. No escape doesn't counter artifacts, so that's good. Yeah, it's a bit confusing going back to Thunder Drake after playing Throne of Eldraine. This is the second spell you cast instead of uh, the second card you draw. Uh, I think I lead with a statue. That resolves. Well, I've got our win condition in play, although. I guess we would probably deck before this kills them. But it does make it a lot more difficult for them to keep up counter spells, for example. Only a 6 6 conjurance. Alright, we've got our two powerful artifacts in play, both a statue and a citadel. Pretty flavorful. Could go for a double block. Like, worst case scenario, they have a divine arrow, kill my behemoth, and then this shrinks down to a 5 5. And because we have a Jace, we can kind of expect to win the game with Jace, and we also have multiple tolls of the invasion to take away the no escape, so that works out. So let's toll. Does cost one more because of uh, Dovin. Take the no escape. Play lands. Spark harvests, pretty good too. Only costs one life, so that plays out quite well. So I have to pay one for Dovin, and then I think I'm killing the Guard Mage. But yeah, I do still have to pay the additional cost. So I either pay 4 or sacrifice my 1-1. One, one. I think I sacked the 1-1. One, one. So I want to kill the Guard Mage. I guess I need to pay 2 more for uh, Kazmina as well. Sag this. Alright. So that's gone. I guess I'll proliferate. Draw Narset. I think I would rather just play Harold over Narset for now, just to have kind of the ground covered so we don't take too much damage. And then I think I'll finish off Kazmina in case they proliferate. Alright, so we're slowly accumulating advantage with Bolas' Citadel. And the plan is to eventually win with Jace by decking ourselves. Currently 17 cards remaining.
All right, so now could be a good time to play Narset so I can for sure draw the Jace's Triumph. Well, probably taking Jace still. What can my opponent play to mess up my Jace? They could have like a Prison Realm to maybe exile it and then I could be in trouble. It's probably still fine to take Jace. And then aid the fall on the draw in case Jace dies some other way. So I'll mill my opponents, draw the aid the fallen, and then say go with the uh, Spark Reaper activation at the ready. Sounds good. There's also a chance I could win with Bolas Citadel by just sacking 10 permanents if my opponent's at 10. Alright, Narset is pretty good against uh, Jace. Narsa doesn't stop me from casting extra cards from Bolas' Citadel, though. Kalos Dismissal. I could end of turn decide to sacrifice a 1 1 to the Spark Reaper to draw a card, which still gets past Narsa since it's the first card I draw this turn. I think I would rather keep the extra permanent for Citadel. Oh boy. Alright, what about. We send everyone at Narsa. Keep the 1-1 one, one to trigger Massacre Girl. That works. I won't our time together. So I don't want to pay 5 for this, I want to just cast it, so I'll mill my opponent now. So I could sacrifice some stuff to the Spark Reaper, don't know if that's necessary. I think I'll just play this. And they can't have a counterspell because of uh, statue making those more expensive. So given the choice, I want to resolve this last. So I still get my 2-2. Two -two. I guess I'll activate Narset, find this missile, or toll, sure. I can keep up no escape or I can toll, because this costs one more because of Dovin. But yeah, my opponent has seen enough. Not sure how we would eventually win the game, probably with Jace Ultimate. But yeah, at that point, opponent doesn't have much going on. Alright, sweet. So we're 6 and 1. Time for the final boss. Let's go. So on the play, I need two more islands before I can play Jace. But uh, Dismissal plus Spark Harvest buys me a lot of time in the early game. Hmm, this one's close. Being on a play means I need to get pretty lucky drawing lands off the top. On the draw, I think I would keep it. On the play, I probably have to mulligan. This is better. Can probably afford to bottom a land. So pretty aggressive deck featuring Grim Initiate, so it could be some sort of sacrifice synergy deck. So Avon Eternal has a chance of being able to hold off the Initiates, but I think I want to toll the Invasion to maybe take away the 2-3 uh, that lets them sacrifice creatures to get plus 2 power, because I don't have a great way to beat that card otherwise. Their hand is double Transmutation and double Raging Crunch. Well, these crunches are pretty scary, so I think I gotta take those. So, Relentless Advance is pretty good against Transmutation, since it would just make my creature bigger. So if I advance now, I would be left with a 4-4. The crunch can attack, but then they have to suicide one of their 1-1s one to do it, basically, and then Eternal the turn after would make it big enough to block Crunch as well. I think that's the play. Oh, 
Hopefully no giant's greeting. Alright, so now it's time for Eternal. And I'm happy playing defense here. Now, of course, an opposing Kalos Dismissal could be pretty devastating. Toll is good. So I guess it makes sense to Narset first and then Toll. I'll take the Manticore. So I'm pretty low at 10 life, but the 6-6 six six is doing a pretty good job of holding the fort. So if something happens to it, we could be dead. All right, Citadel. There's reasons to play Citadel first and then wait on the Narset activation to kind of manipulate the top of my library. Well then, that's quite the card. So it would go to 5, but I would wipe the entire board. Seems good. And my opponent explodes. That went well. Yeah, I could have considered attacking first. Not sure if that really accomplishes much. Alright, so we got uh, seven wins. What did we lose against? Oh yeah, the, the game where we mulliganed to five and my opponent had uh, kind of the blue-black deck similar to ours. Yeah, that game wasn't very close. Well, overall, pretty good performance. Let's crack some packs. Alright, well, no uh, rares left to open in this set, so can do a very interesting pack one pick one. But uh, the cards that are left, I would probably lean Spark Harvest over Prowler pack one pick one, just because this goes into more decks, but the Prowler can give you a potentially pretty fun like black-green multicolor deck where the Prowler gives you some nice mana fixing. And here the Guard Mage is a card I don't mind first picking since it is very good if you can cast it. I'm also a big fan of the Tithe Bear Giant and Spark Reaper. Haven't had a deck where Huatli really shined yet but as I've mentioned at the beginning of the draft, it can be pretty good alongside the 1-5 uh, the lifelink. So if you ever get a deck with those two, that uh, can work out nicely. And we'll do a Throne of Eldrain pack for good measure. Nice Mythic wildcard, I'll take my Garruk or Oko. Otherwise, pretty weak pack overall. I do like the Wicked Guardian, there's usually enough high toughness creatures in these types of decks where um, the Guardian's pretty good. Alright, that was fun. So I want to thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.